So Marvel Snap's newest card is Cannonball, and some folks might say he rocks. <laughs> you know, because he turns stuff into rocks, guys. I would not say the Cannonball rocks, at least when it comes to being a great uh, Marvel Snap card. Through my first couple hours of games trying him out in a clog deck, uh, he felt okay for me at best. This might just be the wrong list, of course. We'll try more, we'll keep an eye out on the data to see where Cannonball lands as a valuable Marvel Snap card, but at the moment, I'm feeling a little bit lukewarm on this. This particular deck tried to use him by filling up the opponent's board with junk, clogging it out with Widow's Bites and rocks from debris and a hood that you viper over to your opponent and of course some goblins as well because if you are able to fill up your opponent's uh, locations then when cannonball moves a card away he can sometimes launch it into a full location and just delete it instead of shifting the power around because when he does shift the power around it's sometimes still just hard to get there and hard to find wins particularly for a deck that's so dedicated to like kind of disruption and sneakiness as opposed to raw power. But there are other moments, of course, where you can feel super big brained and make some really cool plays, uh, doing some spicy stuff to lock up your opponent and then leading into like a cannonball or an Eliath on a final turn to do something really cool and make some big surprising sorts of plays. Uh, so I only went eight and eight with this deck and I was negative on cubes because sometimes if you lock people out, they just retreat for one. So if you wanna play something like this, Number one, I don't really recommend it. It you know, just didn't feel that great. Uh, number two, you gotta snap super confidently early, which still feels really risky because sometimes things can go wrong with goblins and so on. So might just not be an ideal climbing deck, might be uh, an imperfect build on day one. You know, sometimes these day one builds, they just don't get there. So I'm not sure this is the exact right home for Cannonball. As I said, you know, I want to try him in like some move disruption stuff with like Kingpins and Stegrons. That's going to be my next build. And we'll see if people can just slot him into other decks as well as like a big five drop. Kind of that like Vision or Legion slot is another possibility for this card. Although I'm not so convinced he's going to feel great in that position either. So just, you know, uh, keeping an eye out on this one. Reserving that final judgment, just not overwhelmed with excitement on day one. That said, um, some really funny games in this video. Some really crazy moments, some big brain moments. Uh, there are some, some great plays and lines to be had with Cannonball, just not as often as you might like. Okay, Titania plus Goblin can do some fun stuff in this deck. Um, Black Widow is a fine start too. Nothing early though, no Celine, no Ravona. Celine, yeah, Celine will take. Celine's cool. Celine into Widow's fun. So we got Kitty Pride stuff. We got Nico in here. Definitely the kind of deck that could fill itself up. Also a deck that might struggle winning Hellfire Club just because of, oh my goodness, dude. <sighs> Comertage, forget it, we're on board. Let's go. We just can't play Hobgoblin there, but everything else is fine. <laughs> just give them a lot of freaking, uh... <clears throat> Wait, was their hand full? Hold up. No way. Oh my god, dude, their hand was full. Are you kidding me right now? I don't know, man. The Titania being in the mix... Let's wait. I don't think we need it yet. Debris Absorbing Man's, like, kind of crazy, though. That plus um, Cannonball, of course, can do some spicy stuff. It does sort of help their Elsa here, I suppose, but maybe we... Bro, this, <laughs> this just shuts out the game. <laughs> Let's do it. They're not going to play the Hellfire Club because they can't. All their cards are one. They're not literally all, but, you know, a lot of them. So Titania wins mid and then Cannonball wins right, right? It's I think it's that simple. They do have the Kitty Bride, so... <gasps> Spider-Man has nowhere to go! <laughs> you fool, Spider-Man! Does actually Cannonball win right? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, we don't have priority. Oh, we do have priority, so... Eliath... Eliath is a guaranteed win, but I'm gonna be honest, he's lame. <laughs> like, he is right for this deck, of course, you should run him. As you can see why, it is guaranteed, because we're, we're ahead by five if we play Eliath. Um, they'd only be ahead by three, but I'm gonna play Cannonball because it's way more fun and I think is also pretty much a guaranteed win Because we delete two cards here. The kitty doesn't get any bigger. I'm pretty sure we're okay 
dude look dude look how many rocks they have. well they just played dazzler which is big but only the same size as cannonball oh that is amazing <laughs> perfect game the opponent has nine rocks <laughs> that is so fun oh my god <laughs> opening hand yeah not not too interesting nah not not good at all frankly we have nothing to do i need some plays to make do i just rip a viper here on curve um yeah ravona is still better yeah i mean sometimes just scaring the opponent off of something like sacred timeline is fine even though we don't care about it at all don't be a destroy deck please oh well 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 what do we have here our very own green goblin to send back over we might kind of want to be mindful of like um you know a hobgoblin or something but it's probably hard to beat that they would never play it in convertage and then you know absorbing man could technically send it back over but that's kind of iffy i think like the opponent's running what appears to be a pretty similar looking list so far <gasps> debris is awesome don't think we play Celine. It's just sometimes buffs their goblins and sometimes just makes our Eliath unplayable. So let's just go to Bree here. This is fine. Uh, this game just got very clogged up. Yeah, there's their Hobgoblin. So left is probably gone to us, but can we just win like this with Cannonball maybe? They got eight points to make up here. I think that's going to be hard for them to do. What if they play their own cannonball here? I, I don't really have a way to get that power back because I guess I could play my own cannonball. Yeah, no, that'd be fine, I guess. Um, Okay, so they're full mid. Now we really just want to win with uh, Eliath, I guess. Like cannonball is fun and probably wins, right? So maybe we pick this. <laughs> like it's risky Eliath is 100% a weak addition I think I've already literally done this once in the video before with exactly Convertage, exactly Debris Absorbing Man and I made the exact same play with Cannibal because Eliath is a break so like yes you should always play Eliath Cannibal here is only going to delete Ravona so there is technically some risk here but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it because it's more fun like this could technically lose an unlosable game but I think we'll be okay it's usually okay Oh, that's crazy. He destroys the other rock. I haven't seen that before, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, um, we actually lost the unlosable game, bro. We, <laughs> dude, we did it. We, dude, I did it. No, I don't listen. We all know that counts as a win. We all know. We all know that counts as a win, bro. Like we all know the deck won. I had fun. I chose fun. This is why Eliath like you gotta play him he's just good you just he, he's annoying he's boring but he reduces all risk that was a fun little mirror match though uh not the right time for celine sadly man you have like three decent hits on it rickety bridge okay that can get wacky in this world it's kind of going to give the opponent space to play but it's also sometimes kind of easy for us to fill up too and what dude they play scorpion and i have none of my goblins in hand I, to me that is uh that's 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 i'm salty i'm actually salty this whole hand is just garbage i have nothing good to do my whole mid game is dead i have absorbing man only right now are you kidding me i need a goblin dude do something to do anything <sighs> Is this real life, man? I am in a terrible spot. Uh, I think I just do. I don't even think I bother with a Selene, right? I, I mean, I, I honestly think I hold Titania too. Uh, this whole thing is just this is the worst hand I've ever had in any not just in this deck ever in any deck ever. <laughs> this is officially just the worst hand. Um. Finally, a good card here with Hobgoblin, but at the same time, it feels like it's going to be tough to win. There's something kind of cool with this. Maybe they, maybe we kind of, um, 
lock them up here and kind of win this for free and then like cannonball left or something there's something kind of cool here she hulk is awfully big though not a problem at all for us i think we'll still be fine with titania flipping back right the titania combo here is so nice yeah literally titania puts them at four and us at seven so literally any card is fine um Yeah, we want to do this first and then flip Titania, right? I mean, they have priority, so... If I push here, we set up a tiebreaker. If I push right, we destroy their best card. The one thing to worry about here would be... Eliath. Right? Which I is not crazy for a deck like this to have, by any means. So Eliath would cause us some problems. Thing is... Maybe a problem, too the wasp mid and they put hazmat oh my god the luke cage is not getting destroyed are we in trouble uh oh uh, we're chill we have a tie nice really nice yeah that's cool that's actually really cool dude <laughs> that is very satisfying um the hazmat made me nervous but thankfully this revealed second um which hood did help contribute to a little bit and the titania helped contribute to a little bit as well very that's actually very cool that's a satisfying cannonball win the thing kind of it was nice that it got destroyed either way you know like that helped rickety bridge or right both dealt with it that was a bonus but cool win okay uh project pegasus is nuts dude i guess do we just rip the goblin now yeah it's like ravona it's not really necessary we're gonna Rip the goblin now. Would have been cool to land on hope. I didn't know, man. I didn't know. Trinity range. Love to add a rock to the opponent's side. Please. Yes. All day. What an only developed hope with that Project Pegasus. Like, what do they have in hand? I'm 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 flummoxed. Do they play a card here? Oh, but actually this gives me the rock usually. No, there is a cool line, of course, with Titania Goblin stuff, but that, that's going to give me the rock. I don't want that. I don't want the rock. Oh, um, actually, literally everything that could be discounted has already been discounted. <laughs> I think we're fine. Uh, Absorbing Man hits Green Goblin. I mean, this does set up a tie. <laughs> uh it's weird because if they play here to protect it then you know i get a i get a i get an on curve four and if they don't play there to protect it then they're locked up at, at four and i can just win with any points you know celine or whatever later i, I think it's okay i don't know it's fine it's kind of it's it's weirdly foolproof i don't know it feels weird to give the opponent plus four power but you know at the at the expense of, of being able to contest a location at all. I think there's obviously some upside there. Opponent is like always going to play a card there, right? For hope. So it's like, can you do this? The problem is I need to save one of my ones to win mid. So it's really more about like, I can't cannonball here yet. It's the problem though. Like I've got a weird, this is actually okay that it hits Titania cause she'll still be two, which wins mid. Um, I guess we just do this here though to get like a huge lead, right? Oh, I can't do that there. Maybe we just play this here now then just to get a bigger lead here. I don't know. This is weird, but this is a fine turn six, I guess. Ah, Devil Dinosaur is chill. Okay, that's a good cannonball card, yeah. Do we need to worry at all about, um... Idiot Marvel. Blue Idiot, you know? They're not gonna be full because... But it doesn't really matter. Well, no, they are gonna be full. They're gonna play a card there. We, there's no Lyoth risk. Yeah, this should be fine. I mean, we actually tie a Blue Marvel play mid here, even. <sighs> this should be fine. How do they make this difference up right? It's just too much. Cannonball destroys Dinosaur, and Titania wins mid. I mean, I guess if they had a blue Marvel, we'd maybe be in trouble, but Victory. I don't think they do. Most decks don't have blue Marvel now. They run bigger, taller threats. Okay, cool. Good win, man.
<laughs> tournament play worked really well by the way um and cannibal was it's gonna be very good here like how much is cannibal's worth 19 points here roughly i mean i guess dinosaur is variable right but it's worth 19 points okay pretty good hand yeah we like ravona we like black widow uh black widow absorbing man's pretty solid too it's not the like super clog stuff but it's uh just good solid on curve plays you know we, we'd maybe do more with debris and green goblin and so on to clog them out particularly with angela like a debris here could be pretty sweet but uh, as for now this is fine goblins are very good against angela oh do they play two cards here or only one if they do play two it's probably always a kitty pride so I would still, yeah, I was going to say, I would still be able to goblin successfully. Oh, no, Kitty Pride's end of turn, right? Oh, this is risky, dude. Nah, I think it's too risky. I don't think we can. I think we got to play this a little more straight. <clears throat> they often play two here. I, I think we just got to go, like, Cannonball later or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, th I think this is too risky. They only played one. Oh my god, even when it's Jeff, dude, and they can move it out, they still only played one. That makes me so sad. That makes me so sad. Uh, we do actually have priority here, so there's kind of a cool Eliath line. I don't really love it, though. It's The problem is, like, I just don't have a good Cannonball either. Like, I need them to be full here for Cannonball, but Absorbing Man sucks. Uh, there's just no good lines. Like, Cannonball doesn't really help right now, it just could kind of maybe help if it messes up hope or something. I, I think it's literally just a lieth, but it's just not very good. I just don't think I like it. It literally whiffs, oh my god. Well, that's not good news. Magneto here to try to compensate. Um, I don't have priority, so a lieth is not good now. Um, this moves Magneto, but this feels like such a waste. You know? It's like they're gonna play they, they wanna play a card here again. I, I don't know what I don't know what to do, dude. This feels really really ham fisted. I feel like we just lose this game went really wacky. Not a Lyoth at least. Orca. This moves the Orca, but that's still not good enough. Uh, orca went left, it was good enough, dude! Cannonball! <clears throat> Get it together! This game was a lot of missed opportunities. Nothing inherently wrong, of course, just a lot of missed opportunity. Ooh, Celine. Um, it's actually a little risky because we don't currently have a Viper for the hood. Oh, no, never mind. It always hits Hobgoblin. Not risky at all. Just kidding. Hobgoblin's in hand to protect. <laughs> this is the lowest power hand I've ever had, man. This is a negative 16, no, negative 17 power hand. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not much power, dude. Green Goblin Superflow is amazing. It's great. White Hot Room is not ideal for us typically, so let's just interrupt Superflow in the meantime. We can probably technically contest White Hot Room a little bit. Oh, nice, they turned it off for us, so actually even easier. No, no problem at all. Um, do we trust Black Widow to contest that? Be nice to maybe have a titania or something. Oh, it's getting pulled, right? Oh man. That might be hard for them too, though. They might have the same problem. Maybe theirs gets pulled right. Do I have any way to add power there later? Not really. No. Yeah. If they played a small card, I could kind of just toss my hood here for free without hurting myself elsewhere, but it might be a card I play with Viper anyway, so maybe we just Black Widow for now. It's definitely not contesting flooding, but it's okay. Like if, you know, if we're gonna lose that anyway, basically, you can kind of just put Hood there and say, eh, whatever. So they got a Hood <laughs> off the Mirage. It's still negative one for them though, which is funny. <coughs> yeah, this Viper's pretty solid. It is gonna turn off Super Flow for us, but that's okay. We just have the Hobgoblin on curve now to Viper get- Oh no, it doesn't! We, we pulled an Asteroid M. I take that back. Never mind. We still have Super Flow. Not that- like I said, I don't even think we really need it, but we do have it. Um, we're gonna be negative six mid. We're gonna be zero. 
we do probably still need to put something mid to contest. I'm a little worried about Hobgoblin getting locked out here too. There's some risk of that, I think. Like most people don't like to fill a board up, but they might. Dude, they have three spots remaining. I mean, the, the weird thing is if they're paying attention, they actually know that I have a Hobgoblin. Right? They know. Because none of none of the, the Green Goblin and Hood were not debuffed, right, by the Selene. If they know I have a Hobgoblin, they might fill up the board this turn. And just try to win off that. I think I don't Hobgoblin. I think it's too risky. If, I mean, if I'm trusting the opponent, which they're currently ranked top 5k, they might just play around Hobgoblin and try to win just this turn off raw dump and not even worry about turn six. They might not as well. So, you know, this is some risk for sure to this, but um, the debris still kind of hedges a little bit, right? So maybe we're okay, but oh yeah. Heads up play from the opponent. Um, hopefully a heads up count. Oh, they have the kitty pride too though. So that's actually a really nice bonus for them as well. Uh, but we're gonna end up with priority, so Eliath here will just close, yeah. Wow, two heads up plays, man. The kitty made it an easier heads up play for them, but I'm gonna give them credit anyway. <laughs> like, I'm gonna give them the credit anyway. Um, Nightcrawler moving here doesn't change mid, so we'd be safe either way. Nice, dude. Okay, Hood, uh, this is a great curve, holy moly, yeah. This is literally one, two, three, four, perfection. We love it. Hood is so good in a deck that wants to run Viper. By the way, you might be wondering like, where's Annihilus? Why don't you run Annihilus, you fool? And it just didn't really line up to me in a cannonball deck, you know, number one, like it's kind of like two five drops, like yeah, you can only play one on six, sure. But number two, it's like, oh, Sentry didn't really, I don't know, just like, this deck is more about filling up the opponent's side than actually filling up our own side, you know what I mean? Maybe we go here for this to keep uh, Blackstone active. We can always Viper later. Well, we got a Viper on four probably though. I don't know, I wonder what they cabled. Maybe they got the Cannonball. Oh, Ravona's down, that's sad. Well, it only has one spot left though. So. Okay, Viper. Titania is actually kind of safe to load up here, right? Because they can't take it back. Yeah, we can Hobgoblin on on five. This is pretty nice. We like this. Cannonball. No oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. they did get an X-Men buff, but it's not enough. The Viper doing work. Let's go. Yeah, Hobgoblin's chill too. Blackstone helping us out a lot here. I mean, they're down by 10 mid and yeah. I, probably we're gonna have a good good play right as well. We know they have we have priority for Eliath. So it's like what can they do? I have to be careful with Eliath mid though because that could accidentally send over the Titania. Would that lose me the game? I'd be at nine, eleven to to nine. No, we'd still be fine. Okay, they're gonna have a bad turn because of compound. We have a decent turn because of Castle Blackstone or not compound Dream Dimension. I mean, oh. Um, this is fine, right? We actually don't care if Eliath lives. We just need him to be um, We just need his on reveal to go off so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, nice Good stuff. No cannonball, but good stuff. I love beating Professor X with silly Viper shenanigans. Okay um, Man missing our early curve a lot today. I'm sad. Where's Ravona? Where's Hood? Where's Celine? Eliath Valley of the Hand, is this hood something they're going to be destroying? Something they're going to be sending over? I don't know yet. Zabu also hard to get a read on. This could be a spot to maybe clog up. Like once they see a rock come here, they're not going to play to it. So we could go Titania Goblin. Put them to four. Get the free Titania flip later. Um... I mean, they, they might still play one card here as the risk. And then my goblin gets stuck. 
Where are they least likely to play a card? <laughs> Maybe here, because this is the biggest guy. Uh, if we do this, they're actually at three power. So literally anything I play, we'll steal the Titania back and we'll win. So that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, this is probably the move. Viper Rock is also a good option maybe next turn or maybe just Cannonball next turn. Yeah, we did indeed find the right spot, by the way. Um, yeah, nothing was the good there except Hood, maybe Selene. Actually, Black Widow was good too. There were a few good hits off that Gladiator with good on reveals. I'm Goblin I don't think works, but... So basically... I guess we cannonball mid right now and then we just try to win mid with oh well we can't uh viper mid doesn't really work opponent probably technically plays a big card here is my guess for this turn i gotta have i gotta have the ability to play a small card so there's no actual Lyoth turn with titania green goblin right now yeah they do indeed play a big card there which means gladiator's dead okay oh I'm actually a I'm, a I'm actually a genius and I didn't even oh wait no no <laughs> oh god he said oh my god <laughs> Dude, why did it have to be off Goblin, bro? Why, dude? Why did their Yondu have to hit both of these? It's awesome that we filled up their location because normally we'd only be behind by two points and we just, you know, like slam Black Widow here and Viper here and we'd win. But instead, uh, instead we don't have it. 12 is too big of a gap to close, right? I need to be able to play. If I had a Selene, we could do it. This would be 11 and Celine would be two. I literally just drew the wrong card though. This is only nine. So we lose. Wow. If we drew Celine, we'd have it, man. So sad, dude. Actually, <laughs> like, minus how unlucky that was, <laughs> I mean, pretty good game, I think. Like, really cool to showcase how this all worked out, you know? Just the Yandu was insane and the Gladiator was insane. Even if mine had gone off first and I'd sent over the Hobgoblin, we would have been cool. But since they went off first with priority, which, you know, we naturally give them priority over here. Brutal, dude. Like, what an annoying way to lose, dude. Absolutely brutal. Okay, sadly, Celine, uh, no good. No good. No good. Hood. Vormir. All right. Green Goblin. Uh, feels like the turn three line, but we got to be mindful of their destroy deck. Okay, don't look like a destroy deck. Green Goblin's great on Nebula, though, generally speaking. Oh, even better with the Jins. Yeah, nice. That's a good card to throw away to Vormir, too. So very effective. Plus, the opponent may also just want to play here more, which, you know, they're going to be really limited on ability to play because now they don't have nearly as many Nord Dimensions to hit. Bro. Bro. I need Viper, dude. Viper, please. <laughs> yeah, it's totally right, isn't it? They never play two cards here, but they might play one. Yeah, they do. Nice. <laughs> Take it back. I don't want it. Get out of here, Green Goblin, you idiot. <laughs> So they probably played a Jin mid. I don't know what's gonna be right. Let's see. Probably nothing too big because they played two cards. It's gotta be like a two drop or less. Viper, oh my God, bro. They couldn't Viper because they had the Nebula there, dude. That's amazing. So a Jin should just win right. Um. In a way, I do like Cannonball maybe a little better so I can squeeze in a Selene on a Hobgoblin. But at the same time, Cannonball is a lot better later on, I think, too. This might clog them up left. Maybe rip the Selene here. We don't really care about Black Widow. 
Might be nice to have this on turn six with Cannonball though, for flexibility's sake. Uh, we need to play a card here, right? Because Nebula's gonna go to three and then to five. So yeah, we need at least one card here. Nothing else. Oh, I'm gonna have a Jin as well. So that'll be fine. Oh, and the Jin wins anyway, we decided. We played the Jin this turn, I forgot. So the Jin wins anyway. Jin will take us to six when they get to five max. Uh-oh, did I mess up? Uh-oh, they played two cards. Uh-oh. 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 We got greedy. We got greedy. Oh, this works. I didn't know. Oh, never mind. Chill. Never mind. All good. Greedy, but it paid off. Now what we need to do is be mindful of... Um hazmat right i need to make sure i beat hazmat oh also this ordering kind of sucked oh shoot <gasps> oh easy this beats hazmat okay i guess this is also fine it's a backup plan S honestly saved by eliath dude I, we were probably gonna have to rely on cannonball here but eliath saves dude which is, you know i hate him but he's good He's good. Eliath absorbing man in particular is not needed here, but would have been even more nasty. I didn't know how this worked though. We learned something, thank God. This is good to know. Like this is actually a pretty safe play to make then. This is a play we've been making a few times where, you know, you, if they had only played one card, they would have been locked out, which would have been great. But uh, glad to know this works uh, even when it doesn't work. That's good.